Suppose the position function of a particle is given by s of t, t greater than or equal to zero, and t is in seconds, and s of t is in meters. Part A, we're asked to find the velocity function. The velocity function is equal to the derivative of the position function, where we say v of t is equal to s prime of t, which is equal to the derivative of three t cubed minus 36 t squared plus 63 t plus 16 with respect to t. The derivative of three t squared with respect to t is equal to nine t squared. Notice how we multiply by three and then subtract one from the exponent. Minus the derivative of 36 t squared with respect to t, which is 72 t, we multiply by two and subtract one from the exponent. And then plus the derivative of 63 t with respect to t, which is 63 times one or 63, plus the derivative of 16 with respect to t, which is zero. The velocity function is equal to nine t squared minus 72 t plus 63. Next, we're asked to find the acceleration function. The acceleration function a of t is equal to the derivative of the velocity function, which is also equal to the second derivative of the position function. Let's find the acceleration function by differentiating the velocity function with respect to t. The derivative of nine t squared with respect to t is equal to 18 t. We multiply by two and subtract one from the exponent, minus the derivative of 72 t, which is equal to 72 times one or 72, plus the derivative of 63 with respect to t, which is zero. The acceleration function is equal to 18 t minus 72. Part C, determine the open intervals in which the particle is slowing down. So the particle is going to be slowing down when the velocity and acceleration have different signs. The first step here is going to be to determine where the velocity and acceleration are equal to zero, and then we'll determine where the velocity and acceleration functions are positive and negative. So let's work on determining where the velocity is equal to zero, which is where V of T is equal to zero, which gives us the equation 9T squared minus 72T plus 63 equals zero. Let's go ahead and solve by factoring. Let's factor out the greatest common factor of nine, which gives us nine times the quantity t squared minus eight t plus seven equals zero. Continuing to factor, we will have two binomial factors. The factors of t squared are t and t. The factors of positive seven that add to negative eight are negative seven and negative one, giving us a factor of t minus seven and t minus one. The product on the left is equal to zero when t is equal to seven, or t is equal to one. So now let's go up to this first number line, and we'll use it for the sine of v of t, the velocity function. Let's go ahead and plot t equals one and t equals seven. Let's make open points on these two t values. And now we'll determine the sine of the velocity function in each of these three intervals. So for example, when t is equal to zero, v of zero is equal to positive 63. The velocity is positive when t is less than one. Let's test t equals two. v of two is equal to nine times the square of two minus 72 times two plus 63. You can go ahead and check this, but it's negative. And let's test, let's say eight on the right. V of eight is equal to nine times the square of eight plus 72 times eight plus 63, which again, you can check it is positive. Now one thing we need to be careful about here is that we're only concerned about when T is greater than or equal to zero. And because we're looking for open intervals, we'll go ahead and plot zero as an open point, And we do not have to consider when T is less than zero. And now let's determine where the acceleration function is equal to zero and they'll determine the intervals where the acceleration is positive and negative. Well, if a of t is equal to zero, then we have the equation 18t minus 72 equals zero. Solving for t, we add 72 to both sides and then divide by 18. Simplifying, we have t equals four. So now we we'll go to the second number line and plot four as an open point. And now we'll test the sign of the acceleration function to the left and right of four. For example, when t is equal to zero, 
A of zero is 18 times zero minus 72, which is negative. And let's test T equals five. A of five is equal to 18 times five minus 72, which is positive. And again, let's go ahead and plot zero as an open point. And to kind of color code things, let's color code the negative intervals in purple or pink. And the positive intervals in blue. Next, let's highlight where the velocity or acceleration are equal to zero, which is here, here, and here. And let's also draw, and let's also, let's also highlight where t is zero. Again, we're looking for the intervals where the particle is slowing down, which will be the intervals where the velocity and acceleration have different signs. Starting on the left, notice over the open interval from zero to one, the velocity is positive and the acceleration is negative. So because the velocity and acceleration have different signs, the particle is slowing down over this interval. Let's go ahead and record this below. Over the open interval from one to four, notice both the velocity and acceleration are negative, and therefore the particle is speeding up. Over the open interval from four to seven, the velocity is negative, the acceleration is positive. Because the velocity and acceleration have different signs, the particle is slowing down. So below we have union, the open interval from four to seven. And then over the open interval from seven to infinity, both the velocity and acceleration are positive, and therefore the particle is speeding up. So we have the particle is slowing down over the open interval from zero to one union, the open interval from four to seven, and of course the units here would be seconds. I hope you found this helpful.